In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips for setting up your book cover layout using Adobe InDesign and give you some other tips for your workspace and working with type and inserting files. So let's create a new document by going to File, New, Document. And this is going to be a landscape document. We want to make sure we are working in inches. And for the width, here in my left sidebar, you'll see I've got some information. The width is going to be 19.5 inches and a height of 8.7 inches. We want one page and that's fine on one column. For the margins, you can do a half inch or optionally you can do that a quarter of an inch. And if we were going to print this, we would want a eighth inch bleed and click create. So we want to make sure that our guides are turned on by going to view, grids and guides. And if yours are hidden, it will say show guides. We want to make sure that we can see the guides. If you don't see your margin or if you set a bleed, you're going to want to go to view, grids and guides, show guides. So as with many programs, there are multiple ways to do this on creating our guides. Over here at the far left, you can see this ruler and we can click on the ruler and drag, which will create a guide. So the first flap is three inches wide. And up here in the top left, you can see for the X value, we can change that to three. And now we have a first guide. We can drag another guide by clicking on the ruler and dragging, or you can copy and paste with Control C, Control V, and paste in place. So the current value is three. We can do operations within the value. So the back of the book is 6.25. So I'm gonna do three plus 6.25. And here is gonna be that panel, at the back of the book. Another way you could create guides would be to create a rectangle. If you click on the canvas, the spine is going to be one inch by the document height. So you can create sections that way. You can copy and paste and make sure those are aligned. And now on the width, we can change this section for the front of the book, which is 6.25. And our last flap should be three inches in width. So before we start adding information on the layout, I want you to go up here near the top right, and there is a drop down menu where you can select different workspaces. For this, I think the best one to choose is going to be typography, because that's going to give you your character styles as well as links and layers. So for adding text, we've got the type tool. And in Illustrator, you can create point type. And in Design, we can only create area type. So you're going to have to click and drag to create a box. And you're going to type the title of your book. And to scale the type, you can either go to your character palette. You may have to increase the size of your area type. Now, in InDesign, it's a little bit trickier on scaling type. You can't just hold down Shift to scale you would have to hold down control option shift. You see here in the lower right of my screen and that will scale it. Another way would be to go to the scale tool, S for shortcut, and you can scale it, making sure that it is linked. So we scale proportionately and make sure preview is turned on and you can change the scale that way without stretching your type. If you prefer to work in another program, such as Illustrator, you can work on your text over here, but you will need to convert it to outlines. So if I just copy this text and paste it here, it did not keep the font or the formatting. So you're gonna have to go to type, create outlines, so they are shapes and paths. Now we can copy it and paste over here. And now you can just hold down shift to scale proportionally. You can also copy other graphics from Illustrator, such as this outline of a bird, and paste it in. 
So for this assignment, you're going to be placing some sort of photograph, whether it's a JPEG or a Photoshop file. To do that, you're going to go to File, Place, navigate to where the photograph is. It's always good to collect any of your links in a folder within your project. So for instance, I've got a links folder and here is where I'm going to place. You can place multiple images at one time with holding down shift and clicking and it will place those respectively. And again, with a JPEG to scale proportionately, you're gonna have to hold down Control, Option, Shift to scale without cropping. And you can use your zoom tool to zoom in and out on areas or Control minus and plus to zoom in and out and your space bar to pan. I'm gonna quickly go through some formatting here so you may need to rearrange the order that you placed your objects by going to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. And again, you can see my key cast right here. You can actually just hold down Control Shift to scale proportionally. Now this background does bleed. I'm gonna to try to recreate what I had done before, which has an all black background. So I could create a rectangle in InDesign with the rectangle tool and size that to my entire background. And up here in swatches, change, making sure background is selected, change it to black, and send it to the back. And since that is a background that we're not gonna wanna move around, we might wanna go to layers, click the plus sign to add a new layer. And with that selected, drag it to layer two, and move that layer behind and lock it. And let's say I want to add my summary text here. I'm going to grab the type tool, create a text box roughly. And for the text, it is naturally black. So I want it to be paper colored. You're going to want to copy all of your text from text document or wherever you have it. Paste it in and make sure you proof all of your content. For design pieces, we usually want one space after a period. And please choose another font other than the standard Myriad Pro or one of the standard default fonts. What I like to do with text is here in the character palette, change it to optical kerning. And for a text size, something like 10 point font is going to be appropriate. Under paragraph styles, you can determine whether you want to hyphenate or not. Make sure to not leave a single word or widow on its own line. So you might have to adjust the width of your text box. And whenever you paste in text, the letting, which is the space of the text between lines, may not look great. So you can change that by going to character. And right here is your letting. If you want to preview the trimmed version, you can tap W on the keyboard to toggle in and out. And maybe you want to create a different colored box. Let's say in this version, we want to see what a red background looks like. You can use an existing swatch. Working with color swatches in InDesign is a lot more limited than some other programs. So you may want to create a color palette in Illustrator or Photoshop and paste them into InDesign, which will add them to your swatches panel. Let's send this to the back. You can click on the color swatch and change it there. But think about how the book layout is a dimensional piece. So this inner flap when you open the cover. And you can do uppercase, small caps. You could change the tracking and your text alignment and paragraph, or when you're editing the text up here at the top, you've got justification. Maybe your text will look good using full justification. Usually left justification is a good safe bet. And to rotate text, there is a rotate tool. R is the shortcut. And you may need to rotate your text for the spine to 90 degrees. 
And when you have text, you'll notice that you will need to select the T for changing the text color of swatches. Otherwise, it's going to change the box, the area of the type, which we don't want. We want to keep that as none. And think about what relative details we need that would be realistic on the book, such as the book title, the author. We need the publisher. In this case, it's Dover Publishing. A barcode looks realistic. And think about what size is appropriate for each side of the book. As you're searching for a typeface, when you go to the drop down in the character palette, you can use a filter. So if you're looking for a serif type, you can search more easily for installed serif class fonts, or maybe you want sans serif. So that can help you narrow down some fonts of a particular character or personality. Make sure you choose a font that is legible. If you need to do a text wrap, such as this author's image, over here on the right, you can see text wrap. If you don't see that, you can go to window, text wrap, turn on that panel. And here you can change some options. It looks like the second one with the object selected, text will wrap around that box. So you can see as I move it, and you can use your arrow keys to fine tune the movements. Another thing to keep in mind, if your text needs italicization, that does not copy from another program such as Word. So any book titles should be in italics and you'll have to manually do that. If you want to sample another font, you can select the text and use the eyedropper tool to sample other text. And you can highlight individual text to change the color. Here I have some testimonials about the book, why you should read it. Next, let's look at how to save a PDF. So since we're creating a mock-up, we're working with RGB format for digital. If we were saving this for print, we would want it to be in CMYK. So if we're going to save this for our mock-up, we want to go to File, Export, and we're going to select Adobe PDF Interactive. And I'm naming my file with hyphen digital, so I know that it's the RGB format. And just the natural settings are fine. Export. So here is that PDF. I'll show you when I save it for print. I would go to File, Export, Adobe PDF Print, and I want to name my file respectively. If I were saving this for print, I would want to turn on Marks and Bleed and choose Crop Marks and use Document Bleed. And you'll see that when I export it, we've got Crop Marks and my images may not have been saved in CMYK format. So you can see there's a difference in the blacks of the background versus the images. So for this, you can save interactive digital format. And for this, you can also export from InDesign as a JPEG by going to File, Export, File Type, JPEG. And you might want to increase the resolution. So here under Image Quality, let's go to Maximum, Resolution, at least 150, and click Export we want this to be high enough quality so it looks crisp on the mock-up. And one more thing before you're finished working on your file, you want to create a package by going to File, Package, click Package, and navigate to your project folder. Just the defaults are fine. You can select what PDF it's going to save. And now we have a folder that has our InDesign file, and any of the links saved within a links folder. Unfortunately, it doesn't collect your fonts if they're Adobe fonts, so you might have to create a fonts folder and manually locate and copy your fonts if you can, so that if you were to open this on another computer, you're gonna have those assets to edit the file in the future. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use Photoshop to mock up your book cover.